I got this Sony Betamax VCR from a friend I'm working with on converting old media like tapes and film to a more useful digital format. The challenge with this VCR is it's not working and I have no experience at fixing electronics of this type. If I can fix it though, it'll be a useful add-on to my current VHS conversion VCR. I have some ideas of what will help, so stick around to watch what I do next. On my initial walkthrough of this VCR, I didn't expect anything to be working. I was told it was a broken VCR that hadn't been used for years and was sitting in storage all this time. The previous owner mentioned problems with the tape, which you can see here where the tape is not inserting correctly. Also when powering it on, I didn't hear the motor of the VCR spinning up like I usually do. In fact, I didn't hear anything. Considering I've never fixed electronics of this type before, I'm not sure how long this repair will take. A repair that might take an experienced repairer 5 minutes to fix might take me 5 weeks to fix the same problem. Even with that though, I'm very motivated to successfully repair this VCR. I'll open up this VCR and look around, but at this stage, I'm looking for the obvious like something that caught fire. There is a channel I watch named Adrian's Basement where he fixes a lot of old school computers. One thing I remember from his videos is he talks a lot about capacitors going bad. Because I have no experience at this, I'll have to research YouTube for more help on this subject as it pertains to VCRs. I did some research and came across a couple of situations where to fix the non-functioning tape drive mechanism, the repairer surprisingly went about troubleshooting the power supply. It was justified by the fact that the drive wasn't functioning at all or barely in one instance, and that it looked like it wasn't getting sufficient power. It sounded similar to my situation, if you remember at the start of this video, I mentioned I couldn't hear the drive spinning up like I thought I should, and also, the VCR wouldn't accept the tape when it was inserted. The Sony I have is somewhat modular, with the power supply being housed off as a separate module in the back corner of the VCR, with wires connecting it to the rest of the VCR. I decided it would be easy to start troubleshooting here. I've removed all of the screws I could find and I'm pretty sure I should be able to pull out the power supply module. Here's a panning shot so you can see just how modular yet integrated this power supply is with only three ribbon-like cables supplying power to the rest of the VCR. I want to get this shroud out of the way so I can see what's on the surface of the power supply's PCB. I'll get this done first, but I can see there are other obstacles as well. With the screws removed, the shroud should be easy to separate. The one inconvenience is that the power cord goes through the shroud into the power supply and I can't separate any of them unless I desolder the wires. Done out of curiosity, as well as my own safety concerns, I decided to measure the different voltages I'll be working around at multiple points on the PCB. I was surprised, but it made sense when thinking about it, that part of the PCB has to be measured in AC mode on the multimeter, while the other parts are measured in DC mode. It also caught me by surprise at how high some of the voltages are. I guess because I'm so accustomed to working on phones and other small gadgets, the voltages on the VCR were a lot higher than I'm used to working with. A safety measure I learned from one of the videos was to drain the capacitors of any stored power that could be dangerous. I did this by using the probes of the multimeter to complete the circuit of the capacitor at the point where it's soldered to the PCB. By doing this, I could measure the existing voltage from a capacitor and watch it drain on the multimeter display. One last shroud I want to remove so I can get the best view possible of the components on the PCB is the one that protects the incoming main power line. There are two screws holding the shroud to the main PCB, but removing those screws doesn't release the shroud just yet. It took some searching to figure out what to remove next, but flipping the unit over, I can remove two more screws holding an additional PCB where the main line is soldered to. With that PCB out of the way, there are two more screws inside the shroud attaching the shroud directly onto one of the PCB components. I'm not sure what this is, but I'm sure some of you more familiar with electronics will recognize this.
I can now remove the shroud, leaving a wide open PCB to work on. I'm going to measure the capacitance around the PCB. I've read that the capacitors should be removed from the circuit, but I don't own the proper tools to do so, so for now, I want to see what kind of measurements I get, as well as see if there are any capacitors not giving any measurements at all. If I do find some that don't give any measurement, I'll focus on removing those and measuring them again to see if they are potentially bad. I do have an extremely cheap soldering iron, but some other tools I'll need for removing a component are a wick, solder, and flux, but that's only if I find a potentially bad capacitor. If not, I'll see if there are other measurements that'll help me do further troubleshooting for the power supply. Early on while taking measurements, about 15 seconds into this clip, there was one capacitor that gave no measurement. C005 flashed a number, but displayed zero most of the time of the measurement. I'll be back once I can remove the capacitor and probably cockroach a similar one from an old power supply as a replacement. I found a broken TV and removed this power supply from it and luckily it did have three capacitors I think I can use. I say I think because information I looked up says I can use a capacitor as a replacement as long as the voltage is higher than the old one and the microfarads is within 10% plus or minus. I'll see how correct that guidance is. My first attempt at desoldering a capacitor didn't go well. I knew I didn't have the right tools, but I thought since I have three of them, I can sacrifice one to see how far I'll get with the tools I do have. I picked up a new soldering station which came with a solder sucker. Using these tools I was able to do a slightly better job at removing the capacitor, although there's still room for improvement. One thing I'm having trouble with is tinning the soldering iron. I have to do research on why the solder isn't sticking to the iron. I can't tell if it's my technique, temperature of the iron, the solder, or the flux that's the problem. In the meantime, I attempted to remove the bad capacitor from the power supply in preparation for replacement. It seemed like the solder sucker had a tough time with minimal solder to remove, so I tried a soldering wick I also picked up and that was a lot easier to work with. Once I figure out my problem with tinning the soldering iron, I'll solder the replacement capacitor in place. The capacitor is being held in place with painter's tape. I brushed flux over the two contacts to be soldered. During some practice runs I did, soldering seemed to be simple as long as my hands didn't shake too much. I felt ready to solder the replacement capacitor. Visually, it looked good enough. Even a test done later of bending the soldered capacitor side to side seemed solid. Also, I did find that my tinning problem might have been due to my mishandling of the tip. I replaced the tip with a new one and that one tinned just fine. I'm not sure what I did to the previous tip, but from information I got on what causes tips to get like that, I didn't think I mishandled it that badly, but at least now I'm aware of what to watch out for. I'm going to reassemble the VCR back to its fully assembled configuration. I'm hoping it will work, but I'm not sure if the capacitor I fixed was even the problem. I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that it was that. On the other hand, if the VCR is still not working properly, I'm going to put it aside and finish up some other projects that have been left sitting all this time while I focused on this VCR. One thing I did get out of this repair process is the knowledge of soldering. I had done some extremely basic soldering in the past using a single temperature plug and play soldering iron. With this new one, which now has a temperature setting, it's forced me to learn so much more that I didn't know yet. I still have a long ways to go before becoming even reasonably decent at solder repairs, but I think what I've learned from this project will take me a long ways along with additional knowledge I'll probably gain in the future. I powered up the VCR and was surprised to find that the clock wasn't the only thing that lit up now. This time a lot more lights on the front panel lit up and things looked positive until I started trying to push some buttons. I didn't see or hear any signs of anything functioning. No matter what button I pressed, nothing happened and when I think about it, I guess that many lights aren't supposed to light up in the front panel. The final test was to see if I could insert a tape and have it mount correctly within the VCR. Multiple attempts didn't seem to help 
and I was a little disappointed. I sort of didn't think it would work, but I had hope. I do want to fix this VCR, but I'll have to catch up with old acquaintances that I'm pretty sure have a better clue than I do on how to do this repair. If I can get some new ideas, there will be a part 2 to this video. If you have any ideas of what I can try, leave them in the comment section below. It would be nice to try some fresh ideas. That's all I have for now, and I'll catch you in the next video.